Well, good afternoon. I wanted to talk a few minutes about how this uh, Unimat uh, fly cutter was made. Uh, basically, uh, it was a, a piece of steel that I s stole from a, a reclaimed saw shaft. Uh, it originally was 40 millimeters in diameter. I turned it down to just over 30 millimeters. Um, uh, the reason being that after I was done, because uh, I did the first operation on another lathe, um, I was going to do the prep work on this lathe and then I was going to finish it on the Unimet lathe. Uh, but the, the order of operations for this uh, w was made on a Shenhua uh, 12 by 36 lathe um, for the drilling and tapping of the, uh, the, the back of it and the uh, counter bore was also done with that machine with the first setup. Um, from that, uh, it w originally the, the slug came out to be about uh, 35 millimeters long. Um, I chucked it up in the Bridgeport vise uh, with a 10 degree block in there and uh, uh, decked it with a, uh, a fly cutter <laughs> as well um, to, to um, get to the 10 degree. Um, and I came to the height where it is right there on the Bridgeport. And then um, I uh, put the, the slot here for the, uh, the tool, which is quarter inch. Um, and also uh, went ahead and drilled and tapped for the uh, set screw holes. Um, the assembly was over 31 millimeters, I want to say, and um, uh, I chucked it up into the Unimat to get it to the final dimension, which you see here. Um, I took um, a, a 10 degree tool that I had designed before uh, and basically made this uh, exactly 30 millimeters now and uh, the total height with the tip of this tool is 36 millimeters and um, it's uh, could be slightly more compact I suppose but um, uh, uh, it, it actually doesn't take up a lot of room for what it is and um, I uh, uh, have design desires, I should say, to um, possibly make a second version of this one uh, that is slightly uh, squat and uh, not not sticking out as much uh, for anything that may stick up. But I can't imagine uh, needing uh, uh, too much more. You know, I mean, uh, too much less, I should say, um, uh, depth on that because then we start coming up uh, short on how close the spindle is to the back side of this and I didn't want to have any structural weakness to it or whatever although this is, is probably super uh, beefy for what this uh, horsepower on this little Unimat can put out. Um, uh, so um, uh, the set screws, uh, just to make mention, um, I totally screwed up one hole on it, uh, broke a tap and um, uh, so what I ended up having to do was the the first hole was 1032, and then I had, after I broke the tap on the second hole there, I had to go out to uh, 1224 on just that set screw, and then I was like, ah, crap, you know, so I had to even it out, so I went 1224 on both of these set screws, um, and it, it, other than that, uh, it, it'll perform just as intended and all that good stuff, as you saw in the last video. Um, it, it fly cut uh, quite nicely um, uh, uh, to, um, uh, like I said before, uh, to keep the balance and make everything right on it and all that good stuff. I, I did finish it on the machine that it was going to be intended to um, be used on, so um, I don't know if I was swapped this onto the other machine, if it run quite as smooth or if it wouldn't, or I don't know if it makes a difference as far as uh, this goes. Um, this aren't being used at 6,000 RPMs or anything like that, so I don't think there's going to be a huge problem. Um, if there's uh, other questions, by all means, uh, I'm happy to answer them. Um, I didn't think of making a video of how I made that, but um, maybe if I make a second one, um, I'll film the process of doing it. Uh, for everybody that's watching, thank you very much for watching, and um, uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you.